Yeah. <laughs> Hola. <laughs> um, yeah, we've just listened to some Metallica. We apologise for cutting it out just, just as got a to solo. the best bit, right? <laughs> but yeah, welcome to the Harley and Josh Show, your music podcast by musicians. That's Harley over there, and that's Josh over there. Um, you can't I'm see I. us pointing, but we are <laughs> pointing at each other. We're so just imagine good for radio pointing, right? Imagine pointing. Um, we've got some music by Claire Free, uh, Joe G. And Jason and the Locker believe. Oh, it's a rhyming show. Oh, well, it's a rhyming show today. Uh, we're going to be talking about the record store day has been postponed until June because of the coronavirus. Uh, because okay. of that, we're also going to talk about how the coronavirus is affecting the music industry, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, we've got a newly discovered insect species has been named after Lady Gaga. Cool. All right. And uh, there's spoke- hope for us yet, right? <laughs> uh, I was trying to get some good news. The Locker um, Billy Witch is that it? <laughs> Nice. Don't spoon around it. Um, Spotify in, is in hot water with customers over airing horror movie ads on children's playlists. Um, so we're going to be asking, should certain genres of music be held back from children? Well, um, I don't answer now, Harley. Yeah. Well, don't answer now, Harley. Well, what a question that is. First, I want to ask you a question. Answers on a postcard, but make sure you send them nice and quick. Oh, look, there's a little, is that a bug? There's a bug on your hand. Oh, look at Lady Gaga. Kill it. <laughs> What'd you do? You just killed Lady Gaga. <laughs> I actually feel really bad. I just, I actually just killed a money spider. Uh, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, that's quite, uh, uh, quite apt. Um, a lot of what I've been doing this week <laughs> is saving money. Has, has been worrying. Yeah, money worries. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, like, so I haven't been doing a lot of work this week. Um, I did do uh, ran a, a event uh, at Worcester Park. Uh, uh-huh which was very nearly cancelled. They tried to cancel it the day before, um, but because they cancelled it last minute, they weren't. They would still have had to have paid for it and, you know, yeah, still have had to have paid me and the rest of the staff who were running the event. So they went, oh, well, we'll just go ahead. So it's basically what they were saying was, we're worried about our staff and their health, but we're worried about our money more. <laughs> yeah. So, you know. Absolutely. It usually comes first. <laughs> yeah. But we ran the event. It was a bit quiet. It, it did make me laugh. I sent a picture to a friend of mine. I was like, the corporate world is changing because they had a coffee table with all the coffees like they usually do. But then on the other side of the thing, orange juice and anti back wipes. <laughs> yep. And I'm like, yep. that's just... Oh. Just don't get mixed up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I do know a, a story of um, when KFC first opened, my uncle was like... They had the chi- the chicken and stuff, and it had the the lemon wipes on it, right? Like the hand wipes. Yeah, yeah. He's like, oh, cool, got lemon sauce, and rinsed it over his lemon because he uh, over a chicken because <laughs> he thought it was just lemon juice to put on your chicken. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yes, this is an interesting way of seasoning things. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I I feel like we've missed a trick in the world. Yeah, I wonder if that tastes good. It didn't. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, I don't know what what he thought, but it just didn't. Let's like, just say no way that could don't taint- try this out. Home or at KFC, yeah, ladies and no. gentlemen. No, whether no, you're like, eating in or taking away. Wipes, but I've got some Dettol. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> no. uh, yeah. So, so, so you didn't get cancelled. What was the event like? Was was attendance normal? Attendance was down only by about two tables, but it wasn't a massive event. Um, so it wasn't like mad quiet, mm-hmm. but the, there was certainly uh, an air of. Well, I wonder if anyone's going to turn up today. Yeah, um, exactly. So there was that that kind of going on. It was big on the lips of everyone's uh, of everyone who runs these events um, because the corporate event it, corporate world is taking such a hit. Um, mm-hmm. I was talking to I've been talking to a lot of people this morning. I had someone who works in theatre who uh, is a touring um, sound technician. Uh-huh. Uh, he's having shows and tours being delayed until July. Right. Um, I've had people, other people having work cancelled and um, and I had also had an email from our agency this morning saying we're closely monitoring to see whether this may affect weddings and such. Mm-hmm. Um, there is a lot of talk about weddings being postponed and venues uh, postponing weddings until j- July right. um, as well. Uh, so there's a lot of... So the venue's saying to the people that like, we know you've got a booking, but like as a venue policy, we're postponing all weddings. Yeah, I haven't had first-hand uh, experience of mm-hmm. this, but they're talking about they may they may start implementing stuff like that. Interesting. Which, 
uh, Toby, our drummer, he's like he's very closely monitoring it because not only has he got fifteen weddings booked this year, right? He's also got his own Getting wedding married, booked this yeah. year. <laughs> so he's like, okay, this 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 will affect me both professionally and personally. personally. Yeah. So that's like a, it's a yeah, it's it's a strange time for for us in this world because I thought, oh well, if if corporate clo- like struggles. At least weddings and stuff will kill be, still be happening, and yeah. it looks like that might that might kind of mm. go on the wayside just for a little bit, which is is scary, it's Absolutely. terrifying because that's like, right, okay. So, what kind of research have you been doing this kind of week? Um, I've been looking into other ways of making work. Yeah. Um, a friend of mine, John Hart, a uh, great sound technician, he's ba- he's he put a post out over the weekend saying sure. I've had a lot of uh, corporate events uh, and uh, live events not happen because he works for Synergy, doesn't he? He works for Synergy, does Audio. he? Does a few different uh, companies and yeah, like very good. Um, mm-hmm. But he set up a studio at home just to do some sort of band recording, some live sessions and stuff, uh, just to give people because. If you're a band and you're not out performing, this is a perfect opportunity to go, right, well, let's get some promo ready for when, yes. when it kicks off again. So when, when people go, oh, I think we're allowed to go outside now, and you go, here you go, have some footage. Demos, yeah. Here, have some demos. Yeah. Um, and, and he's making it portable as well, isn't he? Actually taking it yeah. around to people's houses. Okay, yeah. I I didn't read the full post. It was a full yeah. paragraph I didn't read. <laughs> um, I was asleep. Yeah, so, uh, but I think that's, that's a really cool sort of a, a good vent, venture to go into if you've got all the set up uh, to do that. Um, I may look into doing sort of that kind of thing. I don't really have the space to do it, so it might be something that I'd have to take around to people's houses yeah. and such. But, um, you know, that's something I can do. I've got 16 channels that I could record straight into and a whole heap of microphones. This will be sanitised yeah. and cleaned regularly. Absolutely. So, that's um, interesting. Yeah, contact if that, is a, if that is a thing or contact John as well. Um there are other things, other things I thought to do as well. I've been talking about doing some bass covers uh, to chuck up some yeah. videos online, just to go, "Hey, I'm a bass player. Just look Good at point. me, please." Um, and also, I mean, there's an interesting thing that a lot of people are going to be stuck at home, uh, yeah. musicians-wise. So that, somebody put up a great post. I think it was Scott Norman was saying that just think about how much amazing music is going to come out from those musicians stuck yes. at home. I've been doing that, and I'm not even so so far I, isolating. I, I shared that it was the glitch mob. Was uh, it you that put that up? I, I, as well? It was the glitch mob that posted it, right. and I shared it. But I've had a few people share my post, yeah. uh, oh, no, seeing it. Trailblazer. Well, yeah, yeah. There's that. So um, I mean, uh, but the thing is, that's not very easily monetized. And no. I think this would be a very good idea for a lot of people to look into library music mm. and um, sync rights, uh, because films are still getting made, um, and or they're still along the line yeah. uh, of production. And they still need music. Mm. So, uh, and advertisements, you know, TV shows, they all need it. So just write some music that you think, oh, I might not use this, but somebody else might need it. It's, yeah. Uh, and it's, if you're in the the mind of doing music uh, or, or just doing any professional work, freelance or anything like that, it's good to think about movies and stuff. Chances are, especially the lower budget movies, they're going to be done with a smaller cast. It's not like those yeah. events will be cancelled. People, unless you're doing like a big war film where you've got a massive yeah. so ensemble, extras. but um, that kind of stuff will, could still happen. It is a good chance to get creative. I've done a lot of writing uh, this week, actually. Awesome. Um, my partner Charlie, she's got back into the, the swing of writing again. Um, it's Harley's writing diary part four. Yes. I don't think we've actually done a jingle for that yet. Not yet. I don't think I've done a What's Harley writing? Yeah. I don't think I've done part one, two or three. So <laughs> uh but we she she come up with some ideas and it was kinda of nice to sit down and go through some stuff together. Um I found some old lyrics that I'd written ages ago and not done anything with and we kind of uh well, the way you said written was like you scrawled them on a wall or something. It was like, I say written, but actually they were in blood in the bathroom. Yeah, yeah, it was hieroglyphs. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was speaking in tongues at the time into a voice memo. Yes. <laughs> I think that was actually a legit Klingon. Yeah, it was. Mm, um, yeah, so that, that, that's that been kind of fun. That's been good to do. Um, we have been practicing to go to some open mic nights as well. We're oh, going to go to an open mic night on Thursday. Oh, open mic nights. I thought about how... Unsanitary that is. Oh yeah, we're going to take our own microphone. <laughs> yes, smart. We're going to take our own microphone, or just at least mm. some wipes in your pockets. So they're going to write that. Yeah, down there. I, I weren't sure whether that I'm might about be this a thing. one today. Actually, <laughs> mm. just wiping the mic. Uh, some op- yeah, I'm wondering if like people who do run open mic nights will start saying, "Bring your own microphone." Yeah, that might be a thing that they kind of. We'll just enforce. sing with a surgical mask on. Yeah, 
Oh, Batman. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Like so. Oh, in the darkness. There's there's a lot of uh, a lot to be done with that whole world. Yeah, um, absolutely. But it's like really I say, interesting, isn't I think it? it may breed creativity. Yes. Um, it may just breed as well. A lot of people being stuck in the house. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. This is going to be a new baby boom. Yeah, <laughs> we're going to be the new boomers. Like in March, you'll have a whole like boom of children, and they'll be called the Coronials. <laughs> Not my joke. I, I, I stole that oh, off the internet. Chronic. But, that's great. But yeah, so that's kind of where my world is at the moment of going, what is happening? Um, and I'm trying to be ahead of the curve. It may even result in me taking some employed work just for the time being, just so we can kind of... Bridge the gap. Yeah, mm. yeah. Um, you were saying outside... Um... While we were fighting, apparently, <laughs> we would take this out. Um, that um, it's that the thing you're working on is last month, yeah. You know, so I mean, I was ill last month and I'm still like feeling the yeah. effects of that. You're I mean, a lot of feeling got, it more in your pocket now than you were when you were ill, yes, absolutely. And that's the problem because I went on a spending spree when I was ill. Yeah. I was yeah. just like, oh, I'm stuck inside and I'm bored, so I just bought a bunch of parts for my guitar. Uh, I <laughs> see. Here's the thing. Everyone needs a person in their life to go, no. No. Uh, I was saying I mean, to Charlie, yes, I agree. I've, dis- I've decided I want new pickups for my my jazz bass, mm. and I found the pickups I want. Active or passive? Passive. Mm. Never go active. Yeah. Um, and the Delano um, big pole jazz split coils. Right. Uh, and they sound amazing. And I'm like, I want them, I want them. She's like, yeah, yeah. Are you going to pay that with... She, she's like, are you going to get that with, with yesterday's money or tomorrow's money? And I'm like... Uh-huh. You're going to get like, with real money? And or? I'm like, yeah, I haven't worked yesterday or tomorrow. Yeah. She's like, mm, yeah. Pretend money. Yeah. <laughs> we, she's like, <laughs> yeah. I'll just take some out of the Monopoly Charlie box. says no. So, um, yeah, exactly. yeah I, 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 I really want them, but I kind of went, yeah, I don't need them yet, especially if I haven't got a gig to use them on. <laughs> Qu- right. Question. Uh, why go passive rather than active? For, for our listeners um active pickups i feel are a lot more flat response mm-hmm. uh which is good if you want to color your tone in other ways metal bass players and stuff like that yeah um they're, they're just a very clean sound whereas i like the tone that a magnetic pickup will will bring mm-hmm. um much more wonky yeah well, it just gives you that nice tone this roundness to it um that just uh I don't know it just sounds like a, a pick a guitar should because right. that's how they did sound like. Yeah. Michael Lee put it per- perfectly when he was saying, "I want a precision bass because growing up that's what I listened to, so that's what a bass sounds like to me." Right. So that's kind of what I'm going for. I'm not trying to reinvent and make a new sound. I want a sound bass that sounds like all those recordings I've heard, just right. the best version of it. Um, and yeah, like I have active circuitry. Which gives you a different do, tone you got a, because you've got yeah. a, um, a preamp on your, on yeah. your bass. East tone, John East preamp. They're just amazing, really clean, high quality sound. Um, and that again, I can shape the tone how I like. But the the passive magnetic pole pickups just sound whew, really nice. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. And it's interesting. And also, you just don't have the faff of just thinking, oh, do I have to change the battery now? Yeah, yeah. And then in the middle of a gig, it suddenly just goes. Ah! Mm-hmm makes a weird noise and you're like, I have no idea what that is mm-hmm. usually it's your battery granted I have a battery in my base but I've also got a switch so if the electronics fail on me I just press a switch and I've just got a passive bass that's which cool. sounds just like a bass usually should yeah. just a little quieter that's so, great that's very interesting yeah. I've not heard of that before so yeah well Harley that's yes. amazing I, I mean um, all of this I mean one in one week yeah I know right jeez a whole week where I've done very little, yet I've gone through so much. Uh, yeah, exactly right. Well, so, yeah, my, I'd, I'd say my favourite moment this week was uh, getting to sort of play through some tracks with Charlie uh, and kind of. I, I've really enjoyed playing guitar again. Yes, um, you mean acoustic or electric? I've been playing electric just because I my my acoustics in the car. I keep forgetting to go downstairs and get it. Like it's a faff, up. isn't it? I'm just, uh, I've got the same thing. I've got so many things in my van. I'm just like, I could go and get that, but I'm in my pyjamas. I was opening the so. door. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I've been playing electric, but that's been fun just to sort of just play around with six strings um, for the first time in many, many years, properly. Yeah. Um, 
oh, apart from playing with me and Cosmic Puffin, where I was just thrust a guitar into oh, yeah. your hand. I was like, play in front of like well, 500 people you, or whatever. When you did that, and I was like, I don't know what dear what to do with this. <laughs> what are these two strings for? I don't get it. So yeah, it's been good to kind of like learn my way around the fretboard again. Um, what, what about your musical moment, boy? Well, that was a musical moment, musical lesson. I've done my musical moment. Musical moment. Yeah. So my, the, and the thing I've learned, which is a very important lesson to learn, I think, uh, anyone who is a professional musician is don't be is to swallow my pride because I'm accepting that I may not be able to survive as a musician for the next few months. I know a lot of people have been doing it and they can do, but because I've kind of had a hard financial first half of the year and it doesn't look good for the rest of the year, I may have to swallow my pride mm. and and say get myself some uh, some employed work just to see me through this this un this uncertain era. Well, Harley, yeah. I think there's some good lessons for all of us there, isn't it? Yeah. Definitely. Um, should we, uh, should we do that again? try that Sorry. again? Sorry, you're still at it. Uh, Turn down, silly, silly goose. That concludes our news section. What Harley did? Did Harley do stuff? Yes, Harley did. Let's find out. Did he did? Let's play some music. This is Joe G with Twisted Fable. He's playing twice this weekend. Ooh, lucky boy. Busy boy. boy. Yeah. The smoke and the dirt. Well, Harley, that was Joe G with Twisted Fable, which we can't remember which System of a Down song it reminds us of. Yeah. It's like, la, 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 la. oh, wait, that's all System of a Down songs. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. so, Harley. What did I do? Yeah, what do you do? Not, not much, really. No. No. I no, mean, well, it's, yeah. I, I'm awkward. teaching, as per usual, so every day of the week. Yeah. I, I, I only have, like, one day off in the week. So I, I'm, everybody's bored of me telling them what I did every week which is mostly the same so i teach on mondays tuesdays wednesdays thursdays and saturday mornings chilled on sunday <laughs> actually i did yeah see yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. that's good craig david living that craig david Nostra life dumbass yeah um yeah so uh we ha- yeah so i had that as per usual normal thing um but uh yeah i had a gig on saturday which was nice at the yeah. trimley memorial hall harley oh wow like when right. was the last time you played there? I can't remember the last time I played there. <laughs> We've played there many times. That was like youngsters. our first gigs outside yeah. of school, was there? Yeah. That was, so we're talking, what, 15, 16, 17 years ago? Yeah, about that. Yeah. Right. We were, we were, well, you must have only been like six foot tall when back we then. We were young. And I was only about two foot tall. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was a twinkle in my mum's eye. Um, yes, so that was really fun. It was for, for a Sam Phillips is five years since her cancer diagnosis, and she's now free. Oh, she yeah. is cancer free, so so she, they her her kids set up a surprise party for her. We um we are very um, privileged to 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 say that we are her favorite local yeah. band. So they just booked us and just put us on stage, and she turns up and like people from like all over the world. Mm. Uh, and, and yeah, Cyprus, Southampton. That's not really all over the world, <laughs> but, yeah, <laughs> but, but yeah, all over the place. And uh, they, um, yeah, it's turned up, and you could see by her face, she just like was close to having a heart attack. Wow, that's that would be the that would not be the ideal uh, scenario. Yeah, exactly. Poor, yeah, she's just and I'm cancer free, and oh, <laughs> <my friends laughs> on the floor. Oh, great. That's, uh, that's um, <laughs> congratulations. Oh, sorry. Um, but <laughs> I, yeah, so we immediately started playing, but that was like seven o'clock, so we don't. We don't usually start until like half eight, nine ish mm. on like a normal gig thing because if we got two hours to play, then if you start from seven, you're like done by nine. So everybody's like, yeah. "Well, bedtime then." I don't know. <laughs> um, so yeah, we just uh, we just played for like forty five minutes and then just spread the rest of the set out. There was a kind of the idea of like, should we be cancelling this? Yeah, because um, you know. Covid X Y Z Z ness and yeah, yeah like they, they just sort of bent no because we we just want to celebrate her life. I mean, it was it wasn't Friday the thirteenth, so it's fine. Okay, that's they, right. They were dancing with the devil slightly because mm-hmm. it was an open buffet. Oh, okay, yeah. I'm that's... like, okay, so you just gotta put your hands all over everything. <laughs> just... <laughs> yeah, I uh, don't want that one. 
don't want that. I'll lick it though. But I don't want that one either. Um, so yeah, the, uh, Murray was. I didn't have any of it because I'd already eaten beforehand. Uh, I always have a little pack lunch full before I gig because I love the right stuff to eat. And uh, but Murray was like, pack. I'm not sure about this. This is a, quite a bad idea. I mean. There's table food for everyone. And I was like, yeah, thanks. You just spat that all in my face. <laughs> so yeah. it was like, we're all doomed. We're going to die. We're, we're g- Do you want an uh, interesting thing? Uh, a friend of mine was supposed to go to that, uh, that oh, party. Really? Um, but uh, he got a cold and was told to self-isolate for seven days. Oh, bless. <laughs> That's so unfair. But I mean, yeah, it was a really nice gig. Um, really nice vibes. She was super emosh. Yeah. Um, we made her cry. So oh, I'm happy. Mean. Um, so... <laughs> Yeah, it was the first time I gigged for a long time, and since yeah. having my chest infection for like two or three weeks, um, I'm still suffering from it. My voice is, was a bit still a bit ropey. Yeah, but it was nice to get back up there. And I also, because last week I've been modding my guitar a little bit. Ooh, People that yes. follow my you've Instagram been, you've page, been on the mod train. Oh haven't yes, you? I have. Oh, because I've just you know not as many gigs makes me bored. Give you so. time to repair yeah, things exactly get things going so if you follow my instagram page on at josh lock official um you'll be able to see all the sort of the modding that i've been doing i put a Duesenberg les trem on my fender jaguar yeah and it's just the the best install i've ever had to do on a guitar it was just you just take the tailpiece off obviously take the strings off take the tailpiece off and just bolt it on straight away just nice. using well usually you have to use the same bolts that they give you in the box mm. but no again no routing no drilling uh, barely any adjustment, and it's great. The only the only problem is that you can't really adjust the height of it in comparison to the saddles, mm. so that pretty much you've just got like a straight line from your tailpiece to your nut. So sometimes they the, the strings slip out of the saddles. Okay, yeah. So I'm considering getting roller saddles. Yeah. Because uh, they've usually got deeper grooves in them. Mm-hmm. Uh, they might not skip out of them so much and also it'll probably hold its tuning a little bit easier uh when using the uh the trem arm because it will just be sliding over the saddles rather than just dragging over them yeah uh, well rather than sliding they'll just be moving the saddles be moving with it so yeah i'm going to be i'm going to be attempting that and i'll just you know follow my page to nice. see whether how much i mess it up okay really, cool. you know? I'll, I'll be following that. <laughs> but the tone is great on that thing yeah i've also given it a little Cheeky little red scratch plate, little tortoiseshell thing, nice. which look, makes it look all vintage. Have you had a chance to play with my little gift? No, no. I apologise. No I was thinking about this because, again, it was my busy week last week, so I was <laughs> teaching from basically like nine till nine every day. So just for those, I'm I, uh, was talking about my Helix, um, and I've uh, I, I've lent you my previous one to see if that's something that you, you could uh, benefit from. Absolutely. I'm really looking forward to that, actually. So I've got a bit more time this week because I'm on my sort of my off week, mm-hmm. so I'm really looking forward to having it. Have a little play around with it. It might be nice to, if we sit down and we can have a little go- set it up because uh, yeah. it, takes, it takes a little bit of getting used to, to kind of know what pay pedals do what yeah but, um yeah that's and it. i've been so used to analog pedals for so long mm. that just like switching to that to digital like something really sophisticated i was just yeah. like Durr. it's quite intuitive in, in using it once you know where things are yes. which is good but then we're um, talking about me here going back to uh the future going back to your gig and you being your first gig since you were ill uh, uh-huh. i know you said you've been you did the when you did the show at checkers you uh, tuned some of your songs down. Right, yes. You, you transposed some of your songs to a lower key so you could just, just so you weren't putting Using so much strain it, yeah. on your voice. Did you keep your songs in that lower key or did you go back to the original for this gig? I went back to the original but then just kind of tried to stick in the octave below yeah. uh, when I could. Otherwise, sometimes I'd be going like, I can't reach this note, it's way too low. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it, it, was, it, was, it was all right. I was sort of pushed myself but then I found my... Felt my glands by the end, throat yeah. glands, um, by the end getting a bit sore. Okay, yeah. So I was just, yeah, so having to just chuck it down the octaves and stuff. But yeah, I think I think I might do that a bit more because I've been quite enjoying singing in baritone as well as playing a baritone. Yeah, um, yeah. Because it's just much easier and it, and it is quite stylistically fun for the 50s stuff and Definitely. also just sounds cool, doesn't it? You're loving the lower the lower range. Oh, I do. At the moment, yeah. Keeping it low. Um, yeah. So, so Harley, oh, let's just add an extra section to my section, right? Because, I mean, why not? Jingle time. Uh, so, so, Rich, Rich, Webtoons, Web. I'm not going to copy every single word, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> word tunes. Um, he has, has put a question on the Harley and Josh show. Well, it's more of a statement that he has been affected really quite badly by yeah. students cancelling on him and also um, yeah, and not wanting to do Skype lessons, even okay. though you know, it's still possible. And, uh, and I, I thought that was a really interesting point. If you want to read it, it's on our Facebook page, uh, facebook.com slash Harley and Josh show. Um, 
yeah, so I thought I'd just read the Musicians Union guidelines that have they've been put out for the moment. They're still a bit vague. They're basically most of the time just saying refer to the government. Um, but I've got some stuff that is specific here. So I'm just going to read some stuff out for you, all right? So mm-hmm. the first thing to check when you have a contract with people uh, when you're a musician uh, is to see if you have a force majeure clause in your contract. Uh, Such a clause may excuse a party from their contractual obligations when an unforeseen event outside of either party's control renders performance uh, of a contract impossible or impracticable. Impracticable, not I've not actually read that word ever before. Impracticable. Okay. Um, There we go. Word of the day. Put it on your MacBook laptop. Um, If you do not have a force majeure clause in your contract, it could be that the doctrine of frustration applies. Uh, This may have a similar effect uh, as a force majeure clause. So, yeah, have a little look. Uh, If you have contracts with people, just check if you have force majeure or doctrine of frustration. I'm writing all this down. Oh, it's good. It's fine. It's already in the Trello, mate, that I've sent you. Um, there, um, There is no insurance that we are aware of as the musicians union uh, of that covers loss of income to an individual following the closure of a business from COVID-19 or any other cause. Uh, Businesses are able to obtain cover for cancellation of an event from defined perils. If your employer or engager is adequately insured, there is a much greater chance of you receiving a payment should your work be cancelled due to COVID-19 concerns. Um, That makes a lot more sense when it is you know, if you're teaching at a school mm. or if you're gigging for a corporate function, because there'll be much more contracts involved. But from personal experience, most of the time, private lessons, you know, I, I go They're around people's houses. Yeah, basis, week to week they? basis kind of thing. So with that in mind, uh, I've got a little thing about accessing benefits. So <clears throat> COVID, uh, if you are prevented from working because of a risk to public health, or you would need to self isolate you may be able to apply for sick pay or benefits from the government. Uh, to find out more about accessing these benefits, please see the Department for Work and Pensions, the latest guidance they have online. There's a link there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if you look on the Musicians Union uh, website, there is on the homepage, it has advice for COVID-19. So that, that, that link will be there. The MU already advises music teachers not to use physical contact with their students for safeguarding reasons, of course. Yep. Um, this advice also applies in the context of coronavirus and any teachers who still use physical contact as part of their teaching are advised to stop because why are you doing that? <laughs> Don't touch other people's kids. Yep. Um, best practice in teaching hygiene should be followed with care. Teachers should... Avoid passing or sharing instruments between students where possible, especially where instruments come into contact with the mouth. Um, so, yeah, I've actually been disinfecting all the school's guitars all week. It's been yeah. absolute faff. Uh, clean shared instruments. There we go. And, and equipment between uses where possible, e.g. wiping the piano keyboard or mallet handles. Uh, mallet handles, that's something different. That's just smacking somebody over the head when they get it wrong. Yep. Um, allow a sensible space between teacher and student and avoid standing or sitting directly opposite each other in close proximity especially singers because they cough at you yeah, or you no. cough at them. Um, air the teaching room between lessons where possible and ensure that hands are washed regularly. I mean, yeah, I think this is all stuff that we should be doing anyway, but it's good to have. Mm. Uh, if you have a query relating to your contract, we recommend that you get in touch with your regional office of the MU in the first instance. Uh, one quick thing, uh, Jeremy Corbyn, amongst others, um, have actually written to and asked Boris Johnson in person, in person to push forward Rent deferrals and deferrals and mortgage holidays, um, mm. because there's going to be a lot of people that don't have any money because of this. Yeah. Um, so you can ask the MU uh, about that, or bring it up with your landlord or your bank. Mm. Just say, guys, I don't think I'm going to better pay this because of coronavirus. It's not my fault, so I might need to be able to push that payment back. Yeah. So anyway, there's a lot. There's. It seems like there's not a lot being done about this, but actually there is a lot going on behind, behind the the, the front line. Uh, of people kind of just trying to look after the f- the future. So, um, yeah, hopefully if anyone has any fears or worries, I mean, bring it up with us because we're going to be monitoring this quite closely. Yeah, um, and we'll be reporting to you every Monday, 2 to 3 on I Radio. And on Thursdays on yes. the podcast. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to play you some brand new music. This is Claire Free. Ah, oh, mate. Yeah. Ah, oh, mate. Yeah. Uh, with mate. her new song from her new album, This is Scars. Check it out. Bluesy. Some 
serious news. Record store day has been postponed until June because of the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, we've got newly discovered insect species is named after Lady Gaga. And Spotify's in hot water from horror movies ads and children's playlists. <laughs> Music news. All right, Harley. Yeah, right. Let's get on to, because we've been talking about COVID, let's just yeah. bore more people with it. Um, <laughs> yeah. Much anticipated music festivals and multi-thousand guest conferences aren't the only events that are being postponed because of the coronavirus. Um, Record Store Day, an annual outing that's enjoyed at independent record stores across the world, has been delayed until June. Record Store Day's organisers made the announcement via press release and social media. While it was acknowledged that the decision was a tough one to reach, organisers also indicated that the health and safety of the general public must come first. The message closed with the recommendation that vinyl fans continue to support their local stores as well as reminder that the record store day will now take place on june 20th well okay you're all right that's a sad i mean it sucks i mean because i mean that that's such a huge intake of revenue for all record stores every year and sometimes keeps some of them afloat mm. so you know and also as it's just before april just before all the taxing stuff uh you know yeah. new tax year and stuff you know it could send some independent record stores into bankruptcy administration which Who is knows? a shame, especially as the, the vinyl scene we were talking about just li- last week of how great it's getting. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's increased 11% on last year, and yeah. it's the only sector of the music industry that has been um, sort of steadily increasing over the past sort of 10 years. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So, I mean, it's a steady increase of about 10 or 11% each each year, mm. but it's still, a, it's still an increase. And uh it, studies have shown that the cd and vinyl industry is much much more friendly to the environment than streaming yeah because of the amount of servers that are needed the amount of power that's needed for real time music playing so yeah, yeah well, if you are environmentally conscious buy cd's buy vinyl don't mm. listen to streaming platforms but don't buy the cd put it on your computer <coughs> and then uh, upload it into your your own spotify account <laughs> and then just stream it on your phone <laughs> because that won't that doesn't change it's anything it's the object and then you'll throw away the CD, and that's yeah, silly. Exactly. At least use them as coasters. <laughs> Give them a second life. Exactly. Well, exactly. Reincarnation. That's, that's where my all my Enya albums have gone. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, also just as part of the COVID story, uh, Live Nation, AEG, and other major touring agencies have formed Coronavirus Response Coalition. Uh, Live Nation and IAG presents two of today's former foremost concert and music festival promoters have partnered with leading talent agencies to address the uh, pandemic. Today, the group released a joint statement recommending that music festivals and concerts be postponed at least through March's end, at which point the situation can be evaluated based upon the recommendations of health professionals. All Live Nation events have been postponed indefinitely, and on Monday, AEG have made the undoubtedly difficult decision to push Coachella and Stagecoach back to late October. Uh, equally as significant, state and federal governments from California to Australia have instituted bans on math gatherings with the UK banning uh, math gatherings, I just said there. Uh, <laughs> no doing maths um, with UK banning events with over 500 people in attendance. That's where, you know, yeah. that's where we're a bit worried now. Like if we're playing gigs to over 500 people, they yeah. could be canceled. Cancelled. That's a thing. Right. Um, so uh, Live Nation postponed all concerts indefinitely because their stocks, which have seen its value plummeted from somewhere around $74 per share to a low of nearly $30. That's about half of their value has gone down yeah. uh, in the wake of coronavirus. Uh, it's about $8.3 billion loss in over a month. That's big. Right. Uh, it's, been, it's rebounded by about 20%. Um, you know, sort of yesterday, okay. uh, following major investments from the CEO, Michael Rapino and the executives, they just basically spend a hundred million pounds yeah. or dollars on shares just to keep their own company afloat. Because the amount of things that have been postponed, I mean, Green Day's cancelled stuff. Cool. Yeah, right? Yeah. We've got, we've uh, got... what was it? Um, Billie Eilish. Of course. Has cancelled everything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's it, it's a thing because a lot of people might look at that and go, oh god, they're just being like, oh don't I don't want to be around people because I'm too important. But it's not. It's it's more thinking about the crowd and who they're going to come in contact yeah. with. Yeah, it's um. I mean, Tom Hanks has got it. What are going to do? What are well, going to do? I mean, he's used to the isolation, I guess. But um, <laughs> yeah, know. well said. <laughs> Apparently, they rolled in a a beach ball with with the Wilson handprint on into his into his. <laughs> Isn't place. his wife's surname Wilson? 
Is it? It's Rita Wilson, I think. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> right? Like, what came first? I want to know. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> Did, did, did he, he channeled just, that. Did he just meet her and like your last name? I think your I name's think, Wilson. It's fate. I think during the production that the ball came to life and he realised <laughs> it just. I want to be a real boy and it turned into a woman. I want to be a real boy. All right. Anyway, <laughs> Harley, let's let's hear some good news, right? Let's stop talking about Corona. All right. Okay. So oh, all let right. me find where this goes. So there's a newly discovered insect species named after. Lady Gaga. Right. So how cool is that? That's cool. Like, yeah, I mean... You've got to see a picture of this this, this, this thing. Oh, have you, is there a link? Oh, no, okay. I'll... Well, it doesn't help because they're on the radio. <laughs> oh, yeah, but I want to see it. And I, I tell you what, you find a picture of it and I'll explain it. All right. There we go. This is this is highly explained to us badly whilst I read the thing. So a go graduate on. student at University of Illinois at, at Urbana-Champaign has... This? named a newly discovered tree hopper species after Lady Gaga. Brendan Morris says he was inspired to base the tree hopper's name off Lady Gaga because the insect, like the artist, is highly unique. Um, yeah. Right, okay, so what <laughs> this is... <laughs> he's, looking at, he's looking at a picture of it. Okay, it's got big eyes. It's got two eyes by the looks of things. <laughs> um, three legs. It's got wings. But on its head, it looks like... Almost like a sickle with some weird balls at the end. <laughs> Trying not to make that in any way don't, suggestive. Don't. Um, and it's got hairs on it. It's got this. So it's kind of like, right, you know, like a hammer. It's got a sick weave. It looks like a claw hammer, but with two ha- hammer heads. Okay. I kind of, yeah, yeah. I see what you mean. You see what I mean with yeah. that? And um, yeah, it looks constantly shocked. <laughs> to, <laughs> Well, you Maybe would be if you were covered in I meat could... for a dress, right? Yeah, probably just looking in a mirror. Uh, or he's just found out that someone's named him after Lady Gaga, and he's like, oh, yeah. what? I'm a boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The whole species is a boy. Yeah, they're all male. <laughs> yeah, we're dying well, out. Either that or half of the species are just generally quite annoying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so um, that's an interesting thing. So what was, what was it being called here? I'm, just, I'm, I'm not sure if I actually put down what the name of it is now. So I, I, I will... Uh, to be sure, tree hoppers feature horns, intricate skin textures, variable colour schemes, and more. Oh, it's called the Kaikaya Gaga. Kaikaya Gaga. Uh, yeah, sure. It sounds you like just turn it into manga. Yeah. <laughs> good. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so, that... so good news for you guys. Good news. Good. Musicians can do this. So, all right. Let's get into one more thing, which we, I think we're was... becoming a proper news channel. That we right? just tell everything is going badly. Oh, and a really nice. Let's thing. do a news, nice news thing. And right? Nice cat. news. Nice yeah. news. <laughs> There's a new section called nice news. All right. Nice new news section. Uh, so Spotify is in hot water with customers over airing horror movie ads in a children's playlist. Um, <laughs> an advertisement for the Warner Brothers film It Chapter Two. <laughs> Featured the voice of Pennywise the Clown. The music is heard talking and giggling over unsettling music in the background. Oh, this is the quote. All right, I'll see if I can do it. Yeah. For 25 years, I dreamed of you. I craved you. Oh, I missed you, Georgie. Oh, um, that's terrifying. Sorry. <laughs> okay. T- Josh Locke available for voiceover work. <laughs> yeah, uh, for he can do it from children. his own home. So even if he's quarantined, that's it's still. So there we go. Drums, a siren, and other settling, unsettling sounds finish out the Spotify horror movie ads. Uh, the advertisement ran back in August and was tagged as unsuitable to appear on children's music. The BBC reports the Advertising Standards Authority in the UK may take further action against Warner. Uh, Spotify did not respond to requests for comments on why the ad made it through. The company spoke with regulators in the UK saying that the playlists aren't designed primarily for children. Uh, The playlists in question include names like children's music, (laughs) music (laughs) for children, and English nursery rhymes and classical lullabies <laughs> that last playlist is the one that drew criticism uh, spotify itself curates it oh, right. like, go to sleep oh dear and go to eat your face so Just... this this brought me on to the new new section of the show what's well, su- not what well, is you sue spotify because your child hasn't slept for five days <laughs> Just... scarred wow. immediately wow. afraid of ch- clowns forever oh yeah, fair. Right, so so I thought we could mo- use that in this bit. Thing I found report back this morning. Okay, jingle. Yeah, right. So Harley, we, I don't want to don't really think about films because we're not filmers. No, no, that's not a word. Um, should certain genres of music, however, be held back from the children? So, do you think black metal 
uh, or trap or drill or any type of music at all. It's interesting because... Should be held back from kids. Some genres contain um, content that may not be safe for work or safe for, for children, like some, perhaps like, say, some gangster rap or, like, metal that talks about, mm. like, death or whatever. I guess death metal. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, metal. like, you know, so those things... But there are also songs within that genre that don't, and if kids or if anyone is into that kind of music then it you don't want to tarnish them all with the same brush Absolutely. you know you could you could have some heavy gangster rap about the wheels on the bus going round and round <laughs> um i think that well there, there's there's plenty of stuff that people have put rap over thomas the tank engine oh, so that was amazing yeah. Yeah, it's so good. but I, mean, I don't know because i try to think about the music that i listen to i think pre-high school yeah. I'm like, I have no idea what I listen to most of the time. I think it was like a mixture of E17 and the Spice Girls, something like that. But like, yeah, yeah. Still bef- do. well, before, right, before, I think before it was about nine or 10, it was kind of nothing. And 10 onwards was just all rock. It was either Led Zeppelin, ACDC, Metallica, or nothing kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but still, I couldn't tell you what the words were. Mm hmm. Right, I mean, it, it, our, our game today on our Facebook page is misheard lyrics. And to be <laughs> honest, uh, my my big brother found out I was into Metallica, so he bought me the the Justice for All album. Yeah, and I could sing along to that entire album, but be making up words the entire round. Because they got to murder, do get get lay. I don't know, no, no, no. So yeah. I mean, that could be James Hetfield singing. You don't know. No, you never we, will. We flew him in for that one. Thing. Yeah. But, you Thanks, know. Thanks, James. We'll see you next week. Yeah, cheers, mate. Bye. His friends call him Jim. <laughs> Jimmy Hetz. <laughs> Jimmy Hetz. Yeah, oh, mate. Um, so, yeah, I mean. Quarterback. <laughs> he does. But, so, I don't know. That's the thing. Because there's some kids that, that I teach that are like, I want to learn this new Post Malone track. Mm. Uh, or a Stormzy song. And I can't. For because of safeguarding and um, and DBS, um, mm. because uh, you know if I those songs have swearing on them, and, it and, doesn't... and if I'm found out to be playing kids music yeah. with swearing in it, I'm losing my job. And the thing is, you're not not teaching them because of what the lyrical content is; it's because it has swear words. Yeah, that's it. That's the and interesting thing. Yeah. Isn't it? So you know. Um, yeah, because there's loads of songs that that will teach that are about death and stuff, mm. uh, but. I don't know. I'm trying to think of some now. Uh, I, I mean, there's arson. We teach smoke on the water, and that's about arson. Yeah, yeah. So, arson around. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Can I say that on the radio? Oh, no. oh, man, uh, why not? You did. So. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I don't know. That, that's the thing because lyrical. I mean, I, um, so recently for for this concert I did at Snake Maltings, I had to do a horror intro for them, and I basically created the horror intro out of mishmashing a ghost song with Slayer. And so I showed the kids both of the songs. Mm. And the song was Rain in Blood by Slayer. No swear words in it. They couldn't really understand the words. But it's... And then it's it's a room of 10-year-olds just head-banging. Yeah. Absolutely loving it. Um, So is that inappropriate to show to a kid? Yeah, I don't think it is. I mean, we didn't get to the point where it said raining blood from a lacerated sky... Yeah, that, that bleeding its horror. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. That's fair. I think, but you know, but I don't think they would actually be able to understand that, and yeah. I don't think that we really deeply into, listen into lyrics until later on. Um, I, I was listening to that kind of music when I was, I would probably say twelve, thirteen, yeah. which possibly was a bit young, but I wasn't listening to the lyrics and going, "Yeah, that sounds like a good idea, actually." Yeah, let's kill people just, and drain them from the sky. I was just like, "This is so heavy, it's amazing." Yeah, so you know, heavy. exactly. That's, that's the thing. It's what it sounds like. Yeah. There's, there's been so many lawsuits against musicians: Marilyn Manson, Ozzy Osbourne, mm-hmm. Judas Priest, um, you know, ACDC, all for the parents blaming them for their children uh, committing crimes, committing suicide, yeah. murdering people. I see. I like. I wonder at what point we'll start getting those superpowers that the like we were told that people who listen to Judas Priests would get in the eighties. Like, when are we going to get those satanic superpowers? <laughs> it's just never happened. Good point. Yeah, I, I'm quite miffed now. You like, brought that up. Like thirty, forty years on, I'm a little bit disappointed. Yeah, <laughs> come like, on, man. Come on, man. Where's my Beelzebubs? Yeah. Um, but yeah, what do you guys think? Do you think that we should be limiting what kids listen to? I think that if we if we limit, you know, all any kind of culture, 
you can end up really stifling uh, the kids' worldview in the future. Mm. Uh, I mean, there's so many kids that I know that their par- they would only listen to what their parents listen to. Yeah. And I don't know, they've just been starved of all this amazing music. I'm one of those kids who was brought up listening to a lot of music my parents listened to, but they listened to Black Sabbath and yeah, Purple, and, so that was fine. Yeah, and also it's, it's diverse. I mean, they, yeah. they would listen to, like my mum would listen to Black Sabbath uh, and my dad would listen to Phil Collins, but yeah. they both like a bit of Motown, a bit mm. of funk, a bit of soul. And so you, you get these kind of Venn diagrams of, uh, uh, of, yeah. of music, which if you just listen to one genre, it doesn't cross over with anything else. And then I, you just don't get any different ideologies coming think, at you. What we uh, what we were exposed to is like our our parents and coronavirus. Us, yeah, our, our parents got us into yesterday's music. Yeah, and our friends and our our brothers sisters yeah. got us into today's music. Yeah. So then that's where we've got. Uh, that, and then Doc that Brown rich. got us into the future music. Yeah, yeah. So, what do you guys think? Do you think we should be limiting what kids listen to because of lyrical content or even just the way it sounds? Just let us know. We're on uh, Facebook.com slash Harley and Josh Show. We're on Instagram and we're also at Harley and Josh Show at gmail.com. Yeah. Um, before we leave you, we're going to give you a little bit of a lowdown of what's a guan in. Gig list time. <laughs> So, so, oh yeah, I should get my you phone should, out. Get your list up. First, uh, I'm going to give a shout out to all the amazing students from All Star Rock School who are going on BBC Radio Suffolk tomorrow for the amazing. takeover. I'm going to be joining them, so I'm going to be live on BBC Radio Suffolk If you're listening tomorrow. to the podcast, ha, you missed it. Ah, too bad, but you can probably find it on BBC Sounds. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's it. Tomorrow, Tuesday at 7 o'clock, we're going to be there. They're going to be playing live on air, and we're doing a, uh, a rehearsal with them tonight. So, really exciting stuff mate yes can't wait good luck guys um i would put out to anyone planning on going to any of the events that we are talking about it's currently monday with the situation make sure you keep up to date with uh the facebook pages of the events that you're going to because things may change between now and then absolutely so um and i'm going to start off with skirmish show with special guests uh this wednesday at the smokehouse midweek gig yeah wah, wah, wah. get along great it's, not wah, wah, wah. it's a wah, 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 wah. Wah, wah. We, 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 yeah, we like midweek gigs. Yeah, they're always good. They're always um, good. Because it means we get to go. <laughs> right. Well, t- yeah, exactly right. Um, this one I was going to be promoting Josh Windmiller uh, from The Crux and Sam Chase. Uh, but that has been cancelled oh. due to the virus. That is an entire European tour that's being cancelled. Wow, that's a real so shame. That was going to be at the Smokehouse on Thursday. But don't go. No. Instead, on Friday, go see JS and the Lockerbillies. Oh, that's me. At the Swan in Holbrook. Yeah, mate. Um, We've we got actually, two people from Holbrook yes. in the room with us. So Jody, we're just assuming you're going to be here. Yeah. Jody and Nathan. There hi, we go. Jody and Nathan. We remembered hi. names. Yes. So we've got work experience listening in. Say hi. Hi. There we go. Uh, yeah. That's nice, loud, and loud. Nice. Hi. Thank you. Yeah. So that's uh, Friday at uh, yeah, the Swan in Holbrook. Yes. We've also. Oh, do you want me to do this one? No, you do that you one. You go for it, mate. Okay, okay. Go on. This one's at the Swan and Hedgehog. Don't get confused. This one's in Ipswich. We have Joe G playing live there. That's the one opposite the Corn Exchange. That's going to be fun, mate. Yeah. Um, so, yes, yeah, so this one on the Hedgehog in Ipswich. We've got Claire Free, who we played earlier with Scars. Her brand new album is out now. That is Friday at 8.45 at the Duke she's in gonna Ipswich. She's going to be doing that one solo. Oh, yeah, she's yeah. doing it solo, exactly. So that's going to be on Woodbridge Road, that one. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we have at Coda, Colchester on Friday, Crooked State, Denial, Twist, James Burridge, and Dirty Donations. That's a, that's a good uh, lineup. there. That. That, really good, nice. A lot of, lot of bands, a lot of ritual played bands. two of them on the show. Uh, yeah. Uh, eight stay. o'clock start for that one. Yeah, exactly. Um, Pet Needs. Weep, weep. Uh, they're playing their, their single launch uh, with Slugworth and Ben Brown and a Dystopian Sound Collective this Saturday, uh, 21st of March at Coda Colchester. It's all going down to Coda yeah, this man. weekend, right? Go uh, for it, Bowie. Cool. We've also, also got the, on the Saturday, Joe G's doing his second gig of the weekend at the Castle in Framlingham. That's the one on the hill, uh, <laughs> which is not on a hill. It's just by a moat. It's not the same. Um, <laughs> there we go. Yeah, so doesn't we'll be doing rhyme that. so well. Uh, it doesn't say what time that starts, but get along nice and early. Grab yourself a drink. I think they do food as well. I'm not mm-hmm. 100% sure, but if not, you'll be able to get some food nearby. Make an evening of it and have some fun. Absolutely. It'll be a really good show. He's got a great band with him. He does, actually, doesn't he? And the last one that we've got here is Hellgrind, Earthband and Earthbound and Militia, all bands from sort of Hertfordshire and London way. Uh, they're coming on tour from this Saturday at 7.30 to the Smokehouse. So if you like a bit of your just sort of death and grind core metal stuff, yeah. check them out. That'll be really, really, really good if it doesn't get cancelled. Amazing. Again, just keep keep your eye 
on uh, yeah all these events pages to find out why. Let's quickly before we go because I mean we're only going to play one of my songs, so I don't mind uh, mm. uh, you know cutting off a bit of that. Let's read off some of the people some of the, the stuff from the game today. Yeah, um, I like Adam Merchant's one from Ghosts of Men. Uh, so the the game was. What are the best misheard lyrics of all time? I'll start. <laughs> we've got to hold on to what we've got. It doesn't make a difference if we're naked or not. Right? <laughs> it works. Uh, and, and the classic one, excuse me while I kiss this guy. <laughs> but Adam Merchant, I love this one because I'm a white, white snake fan. I was born out of a backside. <laughs> <laughs> left out in the cold uh, born out of a backside there you go great uh, I, my one I had was uh, Shania Twain gum in my hair <laughs> you know. what's, what's, Talk, what song is this uh, man I feel like a woman right. ba, 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 da, oh there's that one where she goes I can't believe you kiss your at night yeah. <laughs> right? um, listen to that one um Oh, yeah, Rainer's one. Right, Rainer. Uh, always thought the Fat Boy Slim song was, I want to praise you like a shoe. Yes, I always thought that that's what it was. <laughs> yeah. That's weird. Um, what was it? Fergie, uh, amazing bass player. The answer vocal to, you're the one of the one. Do you want a Mars bar? <laughs> <laughs> like that. Brilliant. Um, Beelzebub has a devil for a sideboard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Chris Mapey, cheers, mate. Yep, no, I like that. Um... Uh, what's that? Tony Bell from Grapevine. I'll wash your back. I'll, I'll wash your back. back for sure. Take that. <laughs> um, what we think? There's some really, really good ones. Um, I don't know what the best one is, though. I, I still think Adam Merchant because I'm a, I'm a White Snake fan. Uh, but there have been some other ones on my Facebook. I've got to see if I can find it. Where is it? No, no. It's going to be dead air if I'm doing that. <laughs> yeah, there's there's so many. Um Keep oh, commenting. Tim Stuff got me begging you for bird seed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> uh, uh, go on. Walking with my feet on Ian Beal. Walking in <laughs> Memphis. No. Oh, yeah. And there we go. There's one. Elliot um, Elliot Stubbings. I'm giving into the best one. This yeah. is the end. The, oh, yeah, the anthem. Good shot. This is the end to blow all your heads up. Yeah. <laughs> Don't want to be you, mate. Um, yeah. Yeah. There's so many. There's, and keep commenting on them. Just because we're finished the show doesn't mean we are not going to want to read them more uh, and just, just get involved because there's so many silly ones. Stupid. There and may then... be some ones that we cannot repeat on the radio <laughs> that may already be <laughs> on there. So do, do go check them out or in, uh, feel free to add your add your own. Yes. But just make sure they don't turn up in children's ads on Spotify. Yes. <laughs> and on that note, I've been Josh. <laughs> I've been Harley. Oh, because of oh, you think. Uh, uh, this is my song, She's Dangerous, from the Lockerbillies album. See you next week. Bye. Bye. She's a whipper in the dark. She's the talons of the hawk. She's a queen. She's a killer. She's a tiger. She's a thriller. Running through the night. Try as though you might. She's right on your tail. You'll try, but you'll fail. She's.